Hey everyone, it's Jay Haskamp again from Frontier Precision with another Tech Talk video for you today. Um, this video we're going to look at the many different ways in Trimble Access that we can key in polylines. Um, some of you may not see polyline in, in Trimble Access. Um, that is because you might see um, you might see Trimble Access call it alignment. Um, in version 2020.00 they changed the uh, the name from alignment to polyline, um, but the functionality and the um, the keying in and staking is still the same. So, uh, a lot of times people uh, call with questions saying, "Hey, I want to key in a polyline or an alignment um, this specific way. I don't have um, roads, so I can't key it in there. I don't understand how this process works. Can you show me how to do it? So I thought I'd go through um, some of the different uh, commands and things you can do today to show you how you can build some rather complex, I guess, polylines if, if, if you want to go that crazy with it. But um, there's lots of different little um, keystrokes and tools that you can use in Trimble Axis to keep polylines in pretty easily, actually. So first thing I got going on here, I'm just in a, in a project with um, just some random random points thrown in here. And to get to where we're going to create our polylines, we're going to go to our menu, we're going to go to key in, and then we're going to choose polylines from the list. So the nice thing about the newer versions of Access is a, is a split screen. So not only can I work in my polyline form here and, and fill in all the information I need to fill in, but I can also kind of see um, in real time on the on the left hand side what I'm creating. So in typical Trimble fashion, um, they want everything to have a name. So we'll just call it test polyline, a code. Um, you, can, you can give your lines a code if we wanted to. I'm just gonna leave that blank. And then for staking purposes, we can put in a beginning station and then an interval. So if I do something like um, 15 feet and I wanna stake this polyline out that I'm about to create, um, I hit the station plus and station minus soft keys in my stakeout screen and it jumps me every 15 feet. So that's all kind of coded or embedded into the polyline. So the last thing we have here is a um, box that says point range. And this is usually where people get lost um, pretty easy to figure out how to go from point to point, but when we want to start putting in um, curves and, and different things like that, that's where that's where things kind of go south for most people. So let's walk through the different ways we can we can make these polylines. I'll try to break down what the different um, little I don't want to say codes, but the little characters and things we put in here to to, to do this. I'll break down what what that all looks like, and then we'll show you how to make polylines in about every way you could ever want to. So. First thing we'll start off really easy is going to be um, using a specific um, set of points. So like anything that you're probably used to, um, you use commas to go from point to point and you use dashes to go through a series of points. So as an example, um, I can do a polyline from say one to 15 to point 12 and I can hit enter. And what you'll see on the screen here is I haven't stored it yet, but it'll show me on the screen um, what I've created. And if it looks good, I can hit store and it'll store that polyline. So it's just saying go from point one to point 15 then to point 12, pretty easy. So that tells me since one is my starting point, my stationing is gonna begin here. And as I jump 15 feet, it's gonna go that way. The other one is to use an, a, a dash for a range of points. So if I wanted to enclose this whole um, this whole series of points here, I could do one through 14. That'll connect points one through 14. If I wanna close it back to point number one, I just hit a comma and I hit point number one and I hit enter. And now you can see it's made my, my little building here, my, um, my, my little house that I've got going on here, okay? So that is uh, lines between um, points through a series and lines to individual points with a comma. Now, um, what we can do is we can basically make a combination of that. So as an example, I could do, you know, one comma 15 comma three through 10, something like that, hit enter. And now you can see that I've started at one, I went to point 15, then I went to point three, and then I told it go in order from three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then if I wanted to even get fancy, I could do a comma, and 14, enter, and then it kind of 
brings you back up. So pretty basic stuff. That's that's not too hard and most people can figure that out. Now we're gonna get into creating some arcs. And this is where people either um, don't know that this is possible or they know it's possible, but they're not sure how to do it. So there's a few different ways we can do this. The first one is going to be creating an arc between two points and thinking of it as your, as your start point and your end point but we're incorporating a third point for that arc to pass through. So that's kind of defining our, our curve or our radius. So as an example, um, if I want, I'm just gonna clear the screen here. If I wanna make an arc that's going to start on point 12 and my arc is gonna go down to point six and I wanna make sure that that arc passes through point 15, I can easily do that. So I'm going to just key my polyline back in here and I'm going to, I'm not gonna worry about the other stuff, but I'm gonna go 12 and then I'm gonna make a parentheses. Anytime you make a parentheses like that, that means you're defining an arc um, command. And then I'm gonna do six. So I'm starting at 12, passing through 15, ending at six, but instead of a straight line that I would do with commas, I put the parentheses in to tell Axis I want it to be an arc. And when I hit that, you can see I get a nice smooth arc, basically a three-point arc if you wanna think of it that way. We can also um, create arcs uh, with, with specifying a radius. So instead of using three points, um, you might have seen in my last video, we did some different ways to key an arc for basically keying in arcs um, in a different way, but it's part of a polyline. So I'll show you how we kind of build this as a sequence so we can incorporate lines and arcs um, into one uh, single polyline. So that's why we're doing it this way. But the next one is defining an arc um, with a radius and then whether we're going left or right. So what I wanna do here, is I wanna make an arc from point 12, and I wanna go an arc all the way down to point eight, and I wanna use um, point 500 as my radius point. So that's pretty easy to do. So I'm gonna go point 12, okay, and then parentheses 500, which is my radius point. And then I'm gonna do a uh, comma, and then I'm gonna put an R in here. Okay, so the R specifies whether I'm going counterclockwise or clockwise from my starting point, And then I'm gonna end at eight. Okay, so I'm starting at point 12. Point 500 is my radius point for my arc, okay? R means that from point 12, from the starting point, this arc is gonna go clockwise and it's gonna go down and it's gonna hit point eight. So if I hit enter, you can see I've got a point 12 clockwise with point 500 as my radius point down to point eight. If I put an L in here, now my arc is gonna go counterclockwise from my start point. So it's not necessarily the arc going left or right. If I did this backwards, let's just show you here. If I do eight to 12, you can see I have a left arc, but it's going right, okay? That's where you need to understand that left and right isn't left and right on your screen. Left is counterclockwise and right is clockwise and it's always from your starting point. So that's gonna be how you determine which direction that arc is going, okay? So now we take a few of these um, things we just looked at and we put it all together in a sequence. So yes, we can key in lines easily through key in line. Yes, we can key in arcs easily through key in arcs, but if we wanna combine them together in a polyline, then we can do it in here. So as an example, I'm gonna key in a sequence here. I'm gonna go 12, parentheses, 13, parentheses, one, then a comma, two through seven, comma, eight, parentheses, 500, comp, whoops, comma, R, parentheses, 12. So what the heck does that mean? Well, that means I'm gonna start at point 12, and I'm gonna draw a curve to point one, passing through Point 13. So I'm gonna go from 12, curve through 13 up to one. Then I'm gonna go down and connect to two. Then in a sequence, I'm gonna go to three, four, five, six, and seven. Then I'm connecting to eight, and I'm doing a clockwise arc from eight back to 12 with my radius point being 500. So if I hit enter, you can see I get this beautiful shape here. I'm not sure what that is. I was gonna to try to make a joke about what that looks like, but it doesn't look like anything to me. But again, 12 curving through 13 to one, going in the sequence all the way to eight, curving clockwise from eight 
using 500 as a radius point back to 12. So that's how you can start to combine these. And now when I store this, let's say I do 25 foot interval, enter and store. That is now a polyline that I can, whoops, I gotta pick my picker here, that I can grab that polyline and I can stake that guy out and I can say station on polyline, two meter height, 25 foot interval start. And now I can start putting my 25 foot intervals and I can stake anywhere to said polyline pretty easy. There we go. So that's kind of what we're doing here. So there's a couple more commands I wanna show you. Um, I'm going to just delete this guy off the screen. And the next <clears throat> one I wanna show you is a way to um, make an arc as a polyline, but instead of specifying a point as a radius, we can specify um, a distance as a radius. So if I go back to key in polylines, okay? I'm not gonna worry about this stuff again at the top here, but I'm gonna key in a sequence here. So I'm gonna go 15. So I'm starting at point 15, and then I'm gonna key in the number 50. Now notice I don't have a point 50 in my project. And even if I put in a number that was a point in my project, Access is gonna know that I mean a distance here and not a point based on what I put after it, okay? So I'm gonna put 50 comma R comma S parentheses six. So what does that mean? I'm making a curve at point 15, and I'm gonna curve down to point six. So I'm gonna go from this point here down to here, and I'm doing a 50 foot radius to the right, or clockwise from my start point, and it's going to be a small curve. Okay, so first let me just hit enter and I'll explain what that means. You see I have a nice small 50 foot radius. Okay, so the right is clockwise, left is counterclockwise okay so that's pretty easy what does s mean well if i'm going from one point to another and i'm specifying a distance and a curve i can have two different curves right i can have a um, small curve and a big curve right because if you think of we're just basically creating two circles and where they intersect is um, our endpoints and then we have the curve in between them so if i do s i get a small curve if i make that um, R, I'm sorry, not R, I make that L for large, small and large. Now I get the large curve, okay? Small curve, maybe I go to the right, I go clockwise instead of counterclockwise, I've got a small curve, or I can do the large curve, okay? So you have R and L for right and left, which means counterclockwise and clockwise, and then you have L and S for the large curve or the small curve, just like that. So again, and then this, anytime there's a number here that's followed by an R and an L and an S and an L, it knows that this is a distance or that's a value, that's a radius. So again, to put it all together, I'm gonna to make one more sequence for you here. So I'm gonna go 12 comma 15 parentheses 100 comma R comma S parentheses six comma seven through 10. So what the heck does that mean? Well, I'm gonna start at point 12 right here. I'm gonna go down to point 15. I'm gonna do a clockwise curve, which is gonna be the small curve to point number six with a radius of 100 feet. I'm gonna then connect to seven and I'm gonna go through point number 10. Okay, so now that I hit enter, you can see my little preview. So I'm 12 to 15, I've got a nice flat curve to six. If I wanted to make that go the other direction, I put in an L and out curves the other way. And then I end with my sequence. So we looked at several different ways to make curves. We've got sequences. We can use parentheses to do say a three point curve through a point. We can do um, a center point or a radius point and tell it to go clockwise or counterclockwise. We can also specify a radius, um, a distance, and then have it do clockwise or counterclockwise and give us the big curve or the small curve. But the bottom line is, is you can easily um, key in polylines with line segments and curves. And if you have the right information and you know how these little parentheses, um, little tricks go, um, you can pretty much key in anything that you want to in Trimble Access.
store it, and stake it. All right. So that is the breakdown on how to key in polylines in Trimble Access. Um, hopefully this was informative and, and beneficial to you guys, and we'll keep putting videos like this together for you, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.